How's it going everyone? Welcome to the Volvo Estate. It's V50 2 litre turbo diesel. So today we're going to do a set of drive shafts on it and I'll bring you along, show you how to do them, hopefully save you a bit of money. So let's have a look, see what the job's going to be like, get it jacked up and go from there. So welcome in, I'm Carl and this is Waterside Workshop. So in my case, I had a bit of hassle with someone's put non-genuine wheels on here and they've also got like three different size wheel nuts. Some have got the, the metal covers on and they're slipping, which made it a bit of a nightmare. I've got most of them off. I've got one more stuck on there, I think. So I'm going to jack it up so we can see what we're doing. Half the old car to pump up. <laughs> Whew. It's a good workout. <clears throat> Get it up as high as you can because you're going to want to be working under there in a little while. Next thing you're going to need is a axle stand. You want that somewhere underneath, not on your wristbands or nothing like that. Somewhere safe underneath. Can't have on your wishbones because you've got to move them up and down when you're taking the bottom ball joints and stuff out. So let's have, have a look and see what's happening here on these wheel nuts. Whew. Normally you'll find if you take stock off here and bang it a few times, you can normally get the wheel nut out. So we've still got one more in there. It's been a real pain. Got an 18 mil. I'm gonna try and hammer over it. Not feeling too good there. Doesn't want to know really, to be honest. But most of you shouldn't have this problem with your car. You should just undo the wheel nuts and get on to the next bit. So I'll turn off and get this out and we'll move on to the next step. So wheels off. Axle sand under the car. Now it's the case of we want this centre nut undone on here. So what we're going to do is put a 13 ratchet on it. Get yourself a big screwdriver. Wedge that in the brake. Like so. Wrong side. <laughs> I was thinking I was doing up and then that will hold against it for you. That'll give you something to sort of leverage against. And away you go, down you go with that. Should be fairly loose, shouldn't take too much to get out to be honest. They're not like the massive hub nuts that you have on other cars. These are just a big long bolt like so. Right, put that to the side, don't lose it. And that's your drive shaft in there. Take this out. You're gonna wanna get your track rod arm next. Let me clean your hands up, I'll take you in now and I'll show you what's what. So yeah, we're in here. That's your track rod arm right there. You want to undo that. Splitter in here, try not to split this rubber while you're doing it. Otherwise you're going to have to replace it on your next MOT. 
sometimes you can knock these, get that to the top of the thread, give it a few taps and they'll come loose. You might have to put a little um, Allen key in the top and spin this separately. And then we're underneath here, bottom ball joint, which is this one here. There's a nut and a bolt through that, you want to take them out. No, actually on this one there's a nut just on the top of it. Slightly different driver cars. And then you or you could take these three out here. Either way, you just need to separate this bottom from this arm so you can move it around. There is another way of doing that as well, but it's a bit of hassle. You can undo this arm at the back here and up there, and you can swing your arm backwards and forwards. So there's lots of ways of doing it, but we'll go with the undoing under there. So let's get this one undone first. So what you need to do here, you want a 17 mm spanner and a little Allen key that fits in there. Normally fairly straightforward. And what the Allen key does is stops it from spinning if it starts to spin on the track rod end, on the joint, which they can quite often do. Seem to be coming off quite nicely. You can use an air gun to do these once you crack them off if you want to. Or a socket, 70mm socket to do the same job. But I like to have an open ended spanner because then I can see if the joint starts to spin on the inside. As soon as it does that, you want to get the Allen key straight in there before it starts spinning too much. It really gives you a lot of stick and you really can't get it to stop. Put a jack underneath here with a piece of wood. Put some pressure on it, get some weight on it, you know, get a bit of the car's weight on it. And that will get that out for you. No speed about doing this bit, you just want to do it nice and smoothly. No sudden movements because then I normally pick up and I'll start spinning just nice and smooth like I am. And you shouldn't have any problems, I should wind off and wind back on when you're putting it back together. No problem whatsoever. That's the plan. We're nearly off, so it's looking good. And didn't really need the Allen key, but quite often you do. It's got to a point where I can do it by hand now. Put that down there at the way with the Allen key and the spanner ready. Now you could put a ball joint splitter in there and give it a whack, but you got a good chance of hitting the uh, splitting the rubber if you do so. So sometimes you can hit the side of here and it will come free. going to be a pain, which is not what we want, and that's a really good rubber so I don't really want to split it, plus from the feel of it, the joint's really good too, I might just get a little bit of wood and put over the top of it and just see if we can tap it downwards without damaging the thread, and if not we're going to have to use the splitter. Just bear with me a second while I find a piece of wood, because I've had a good tidy up. <laughs> now I don't know where everything is. I've got a bit, I've got a bit. Right. This is my bit of wood for doing this sort of thing. And hopefully you can just put it on top and... Shock it through, but... not really having any of it. <laughs> it's a pretty tough one. Normally they go a lot easier than that. I 
This obviously haven't been off for a good while. I ain't gonna have a choice. I'm gonna have to put the old splitter for it. It's a bit of a pain because quite often they split the rubber. You have to replace the joint, but it's not going this time, so it's part of what happens when you're doing these jobs. Pretty good. Came out and we didn't split anything, so that was nice. See how easy it comes off when it wants to. You can see this um, drive shaft gate here hasn't been on. There's not even no attachment to it at all. And this time we're it's literally just been spinning. You can probably hear that as quite a lot of noise and movement in that drive shaft. So the next thing to do is the same on the bottom one down here. And that's a much bigger bolt. I think it's a 19, so I'll get a spanner for that, we'll get that undone. Okay, so we're on the bottom door joint there, it's actually a 22mm, it's quite a big old bolt. We've just got to see if we can get it cracked. It's going to be fun. Got to get it moving. Here we go. Yeah, it. Hopefully, it's all wound off just like the other one did. If it starts spinning, it's going to be a pain. There's been quite a bit of grease and stuff down here from where the dryer shaft's been leaking, so. Should sort of work in our favour. It's coming undone. Again, you've got to do these slow and steady. This one, even more, being a bigger joint. Little sprayer degreaser don't help and um, does help <laughs> quite often. Give it a squirt just to get some some of the grease in that off, just so it don't start spinning. There's quite a bit on the thread there, so we wanna just give it its, its best chance. Looking pretty good so far. Sometimes when doing these it can be a pain, other times they can come undone quite nicely like this. So there is another option, you can undo the three bolts and slide it out of the arm as well. I would like to go this way just to get a look at the bottom ball joint and make sure it's all good. Ready for the MOT and stuff like that, it's, I don't really want to be stripping this all down again. When it comes for time for the MOT, it's getting a little bit tougher near the top, but we're still moving, that's the main thing. This is the bit where you want it to be nice and clean because this is where it will normally hang up if it's going to. Just as you're getting near the top. We're looking good, we're looking good. It's red. Uh, here we go, we started spinning. See, that's what I didn't want. <laughs> I 
No, we're all right, we're all right. Just went back a couple of turns. And picked up, turned smoothly again, and away we go again. Just every now and again, just, just put your your thumb on top and feel the thread, and you you feel if I'm spinning with the nut or just going, just stand still. It's hard work on a floor like this. Up in the air on a ramp. Obviously you can just stand there and do the job, but again on the bottom where we're gonna have to split the joint. Try and do that without splitting the gator. We are getting there, I know it doesn't seem like it, but you have to do this slow and steady. Otherwise, you end up with all sorts of problems, and then you won't be doing anything. Get very near the top. Might have to go and get an open-ended spanner because this might get caught between the top and the drive shaft, but we might get away with it. It's not a problem if it does because all you have to do is go over the nut, slide it down onto the joint, take the nut off. Alright, we should be able to yeah, see we've got caught up, so all we do is just run it down the bottom. Like so, take the nut off if you can, it's still not ready, it's very close though. Yep, down the bottom, spin the nut until you get it off, like that, and then just take your spanner off. Okay, so that's that done. So they're quite time consuming as you saw, they're not just get them done and they come flying off, they certainly don't, and they're going to get the splitter again. Hopefully we can get in there without splitting the, the rubber again. Joint's gone, and there you go. Joint's off. Split the stain on. It's going to take a few knots to get that where we want it. Everything's quite heavy, so you have to just sort of work with things. Spurs. For some reason, it's got stuck on there. Not no more. <laughs> right, if you've got a bottom ball joint like that, it's all flappy and doing nothing, that's knackered. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get one of them now. But we can still carry on with the job. Just going to hinder obviously putting it back together. We should better just push the drive shaft out now. Might have to give it a little bit of helping hand. There we go. And the drive shaft's out there. 
Now we just need something to put underneath because obviously the oil is going to come out. So just find yourself an old tub like this or a proper drain plug tub. Stick it underneath ready to catch what's going to come out. And hopefully the dry shaft will just pull out. didn't just come out, I pulled the end off. So what you have to do when it does that is you have to get under here behind the cup and then just try and give it a little bit of a leverage forwards. And that should start to slacken off. So we'll do that now. And uh, hang on, that's my fault. This is the uh, one of the drive shafts that are split, so you have to undo the the two little nuts underneath, which are probably going to be 13, something like that. Let me get in there and show you, so you know what's going on. I thought they were on the other side for some reason. But down under there, that cup bear has got to come off, and for that to come off. We have to undo them. See the bolts sticking out above the cup? There's one at the top and there's one at the bottom. So we undo them and then the rest will pull out. So once you've undone the bolts down there, the little 13s, very easy to undo. You just wiggle it around. And there you go, out it comes. You'll end up with a shaft like so, quite a big old thing. So I thought this was the other side, that's why I hadn't realised what was going on. And then obviously the new one should all be joined together. And no problems if it ain't, it's just a case of putting the gator back on and doing everything up. But yeah, hopefully this is my problem. It feels like it's quite badly worn. And that's one side out, and that's pretty much how you go. Same in reverse, to put it all back together. So, I hope that's helped to figure you out, give you an idea how you do these. Fairly straightforward, bottom ball joint, track rod end, clamp in the middle of the back of the engine block, two 13s, tap the cups, give it a wiggle, and out they come. It's just being very careful on these threads and stop them spinning, that's what can be a pain. Obviously this bottom one, as you can see, is absolutely knackered. So I've got to change that anyway, so I'll order one of them up now. But it looks like it's hope, hopefully it's helped you fill you out and whew, saved you a bit of money. Right, I'm gonna carry on with the other side, but I'm gonna end this video here now. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.